Hi friends, it's Grace and welcome back to another video. Today I'm going to be doing the book acquiring tag, which I was tagged in by Andrew from Andrew's Wizardly Reads and he is the king of book hauls, so he is the perfect person to do this tag and I loved watching him answer these questions just to get a little bit of insight on his habits, but um, I am happy that he tagged me in this one because I think that the questions are fun and and I am looking forward to answering them myself. So question one is, do you plan your book purchases ahead of time or do you impulse buy? And I think for me, it's honestly just a combination of both of these things because I have in my head um, sort of a long list of books that I know that I'm interested in buying. And then when I actually go to the store, depending on what I find or in what condition I find it or like sales that they might be having or any common combination of factors that you could imagine, like the addition of the book that they have. Um, am I going to go get it at the store or am I going to wait and buy it online so that I can get an edition that I like? There are so many factors to consider. So when I am planning, I know what I want to buy, but then when I actually make my purchases, it's sort of impulsive in the way that it just depends on what my mood is right then. Question two is how do you decide what books to buy? And I feel like I kind of just answered this in my explanation for the first question, but I do feel like I am sort of a mood buyer. Um, overarching though, I definitely get my recommendations from booktube a lot of the times and just from like what people are talking about and I hear like keywords that interest me and then that definitely puts books on my list to be bought and then in the moment I kind of just decide on what I'm gonna get at that particular time. Question three is what is your philosophy on where you shop? Online versus in person, large versus small, physical, digital, or audio, new versus used, etc. So I have a lot of different kind of things that I want in a book. Generally, I like to display them on my shelves, so I want an edition of a book that I like to look at and that like is to my personal tastes. Um, I try not to like judge whether I want to read a book based on its cover, but I do uh, aim to get an edition of a book that I like. So that is definitely a part of my decision. I will buy things in person if they have the versions that I want. And if not, then I will go to online to get it from somewhere that does have the one that I want. Uh, I really like shopping at small bookstores, but I think that it's harder to plan what you're going to get because you are not necessarily uh, guaranteed of the stock that they will have. So I would probably go to smaller bookstores just to peruse and see if they have anything that I am interested in. But if I am planning to go out and buy a book and I know that I want that particular book, then I will go to a larger bookstore where I know that I'm going to be able to find it. And then in terms of physical audio or ebook, I generally buy the books that I'm the most excited about in a physical format. And so far I have been using my library for audiobooks and then ebooks are a bit different for me because a lot of the times I will buy something on ebook when it's on sale if I want to try it out and I'm not sure whether I'm going to like it or not either that or I find the physical book a little bit expensive if I'm not as excited about it so all of those factors come into play question four is what about little free libraries what do you think about them and have you used one and why or why not so I lived in London, Ontario while I was doing my master's degree at Western and I moved back home in the fall. And while I was in London, I found that there were a lot more free little libraries in the neighborhoods that were sort of around my house because I used to love going walking and I would see a lot of them. And so there were a couple of times that I put some books in there and I don't recall ever actually taking a book out of one, but I love the idea of them. I think that they're fantastic and one day I feel like I would really want to build one. I don't know what the rules are around building something like that on your own property, but I would love to have one of those. Just. I, I find it so nice as a little exchange where you can provide some books that you know you're willing to lend out to whoever and they can just take them and then hopefully it will get the ball rolling where people are going to return books to them as well. So I 
definitely would use them, but I don't find that there are as many around in like my hometown now. And I don't know if I'm just not like living in the areas where they exist. So I don't know, maybe I could start a trend there if they haven't made their way here yet. Question five is how do you feel after acquiring a book and do you share it like in a haul or a book diary? So I always pretty much feel excited after acquiring a book. Um, inevitably, I will have so much excitement for that book and then I won't end up reading it for like months. And a lot of the times that excitement is still there, but that is just my book buying versus my book reading habit. They're two entirely different hobbies. But I do generally share book hauls. Um, I really like filming those videos because it's just fun. You know, you can feel the excitement that I had when I bought the book um, and then I'm sharing it with you guys. And I haven't made a book haul in a little bit, a couple months I think, but I kind of always wait until I've actually bought like a few books so that it's worth it to make a video about them and then I will share them. Question six is how do you feel looking at your books that haven't been read yet and does it matter to you if it's a large or small amount? And so for me, um, I mostly feel excitement looking at the books that I haven't read. Sometimes I feel a little bit over overwhelmed just because I know in my mind that there are so many books that I want to read and only so much time in order to read them. But I'm reading all the time and I have a bunch of books on my shelves that the reason why I bought them was because I was genuinely looking forward to them. And so that feeling doesn't really go away for me. And it does kind of matter whether it's a large or small amount, but for me that mostly matters because of the space that I have and the fact that I have a limited amount of space for books. So I'm trying to control myself a little bit better in that sense, but it doesn't affect my excitement for the books. Question seven is how do you decide what number of unread books is the right amount? And the answer is that I don't. Um, I don't consider that. I mean, I do consider that it will take me a long time to read my unread books, but I don't think I'm ever gonna stop like, so it's not worth it to try and decide on a number. Question eight is, do you have a TBR game or a process for reading them? And I don't have a TBR game. Um, I do make a TBR every month, and this is something that Andrew also mentioned in his video, but I've been considering moving to an MBR or a might be read because I found myself kind of doing that with my TBRs anyway. I would make them a little bit lengthier. That way, when I got later in the month, I would have books to choose from. Like, I would have a list for myself and whichever one I felt like picking up, I would. Um, but then I ended up starting to feel bad that I wasn't finishing my TBR when that wasn't really the purpose of it in the first place. So I might just switch that terminology and acknowledge the fact that I'm gonna make a list of books and I'm just saying that they might be read. I'm not committing myself to them on that higher level, so I think that that will probably work well for me because I pick my TBRs based on what I think my mood will be for the month, and that's kind of just it. Question nine is, do you have a book buying problem? What is the nature of it, if so, and can it be adjusted? So I think yes and no. Like, I definitely spend a lot of money on books, but I think that I'm good at balancing it with other things. Like, if I need to save money, and I am in a position right now where I'm trying to save more money, I know that I can scale back my buying and in the past couple months I have scaled back my buying and it's not that hard for me to do that. For me it's just like keeping the list in my head of things that I would be buying and then just scaling them back to buying things that I know that I'm reading right away like series that I'm continuing or buddy reads that I'm having and I definitely think that unchecked with like an unlimited amount of money uh, yeah, I would have a problem. I would just go insane. But I do think that I have the ability to adjust it, so I'm not overly concerned. Number 10 is to tag two or three others to ponder their book buying process. And one person that I'm gonna tag in this is Abby from Abby Salter, and I have not checked whether she's done this or not, but the reason that I think it would be fun to see her do it is because I've watched various hauls and unhauls from her, and I think that it would be cool to hear about her process because it seems like she's good at 
balancing what comes in and what comes out. And then another person um, is Ben from Overly Average Ben, and I know that he doesn't do tag videos super often, and I just continue tagging him in things, but this one I actually have a reason because I feel like I would like to hear him share his book buying process, even though I feel like I already know kind of how he acquires his collection, but I really like the way that he does it. So if he wants to share, then that would be really cool. And then number 11, which is really cute, is to know that you are awesome just as you are and being a book lover is amazing, which is true and that is the most important prompt of them all. So I hope that you liked this. Please like if you did like it. Um, please subscribe if you really liked it and want to see more content from me. I post new videos every Monday and Thursday. I will have information about my Patreon, Discord, and socials down in my description. And I hope that you have a fantastic rest of your day. I'll see you in the next one. Bye!